So next to our agenda is item G. Exactly. Uh, Mr. President, we for, for purposes of quorum, th this is your legal counsel, Michael Canotes. For purposes of quorum, we really should take the role again to make sure all board members are present. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, uh, Secretary Puma, are you there? Our attorney wants us to do another roll call. If you are speaking, uh, you're on mute. I just got on Fang. What's that again? Do another round call for what? For a roll call for attendees. Uh, oh, okay. As attendees. we come out of the break. Sure. Okay. Do you want me to start now or wait a few more minutes? Yeah, no, we're starting now. Okay. So the afternoon round call uh, Tian Fang? Here. Brett Gladstone? Here. Pasquale Gutierrez? Here. Sylvia Kwan? Ebony Lewis? Here. Robert Perriman present. Ronald Jones? Nilza Serrano? Sonny Ward? Here. We've got a quorum still. No, wait. One, two. Yeah, we do. There you go, Mr. Chair. Is, now it's a new territory. Is the staff needed to know the afternoon attendance differently? If there's. We can note it in the minutes. I see, I think that Neil's had just raised her hand. She's listed as an attendee if we could get her promoted again. Well, yeah, when, when, when they log back, uh, a staff will uh, know. They can know. I am yeah. here. I just didn't have access to unmuting. Thank you. I'm here. Okay. Sylvia with us. Sylvia was just active with me on, on the emails. <clears throat> okay, let's, let's continue. Um, this agenda item is executive committee's report. I just want to give a, 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 a quick overview and then Laura will give detail. Uh, we met two months, well, five to two months ago, um, May 7th. And uh, the main topic was about formalize the process uh, for our committees and which is more uh, and, you know, less structured. So, so this is the main discussion point. And uh, uh, one of the board members also mentioned that uh, uh, NCOB's annual meetings uh, resolution got moving around may impact the discussion of uh, diversity and equity. So Laura was effective enough to reach out to NCOB, uh, get inquiries about um, the logistics and the process of these uh, uh, resolutions, uh, and she got out the information. So with that said, I think uh, I want Laura to do both uh, executive uh, committee's report one and two, and after that, we do a public comment. Okay. Sure. Um, I know that Sylvia's going to leave us shortly for a little bit, so maybe we can start with the M Carp item in case that um, yes. Sylvia or Neil said. Yeah, you can go ahead. Sure. So, as John mentioned, uh, um, at the regional summit, the board had a resolution to modify the governance structure of the board of directors of NCARB. They were going to remove uh, or consolidate the treasurer secretary position into one, uh, eliminate the second vice president, and create two more at large board members. 
So the board decided not to move that resolution forward. Um, they want additional study. I think they want to hire a governance consultant. I think there were some concerns that it wouldn't pass. So they did not move that resolution forward. Um, as an option, I looked at whether there's a second resolution going forward at the annual business meeting to um, modify the term limits of the regional directors. So I asked the parliamentarian whether we could offer the tabled resolution as an amendment to the resolution that will be on the floor. And the parliamentarian said that would be ruled out of order. So uh, Sylvia and Niels are members of the diversity collaborative and they may have some more information. I don't know if they've had further discussions since our executive committee meeting um, as to maybe where they're gonna go with this. Yeah, so what has um, transpired since is that I, uh, I've been getting training um, to be a future board member. Uh, my term starts in July. So I've been talking to uh, the whole series of people who train you, right? So I posed that question. In fact, that was the last question I posed at the meeting uh, yesterday or the day before and asked for a, a summary of how resolutions are done and so forth. So it looks like the, um, although the resolution is tabled for this particular vote, the incoming president of NCARD, who himself is from a minority group, is planning to take that on as well as um, other initiatives that he has in mind to sort of change, change it up, change up the thinking and uh, sort of the dynamics of, the, of the, that board. The board, I believe, and I may have the numbers wrong, but I believe it's 17 members. And uh, as you all might guess, there are certain groups of, of um, people within what I guess you would call, you know, the red states or whatever. I don't even know if that's politically correct to say, but um, there was pushback on that um, as, as there was no recognition, uh, there was recognition Let's just say there was recognition that um, there there may be a need, but we're not sure. And so the at the compromise was to get this consultant, which Laura, Laura mentioned. And I think the consultant will be a very big um, improvement in the sense that the consultant is going to start teaching the board level at the board level first. Uh, see, the way that I looked at it was that they began the process with a, what I would call the grassroots level, which is the committee that Niels and I sat on. And we came up with, worked really hard over two years and came up with a, um, a process and a recommendation through these resolutions. However, the, uh, they actually picked it apart a little bit, the ones that were in disagreement and said, you know, it's not clear enough. Uh, we don't think it's got enough meat on the bones, it needs more, et cetera. So by creating a, um, a consultant level, a third party, you know, non-NCAR person is gonna take it and educate those who are not yet educated is the, the way that I'm looking at it. So it's gonna take, in my, I'm very feeling very strongly that in one year, a year from now, we're gonna vote something like this in um, with a lot more approval, you know, a lot more um, buy-in um, because it's going to be taught from the top down and it's already been brought up from the grassroots up. So I think we're going to wrap a bow around it and get it done next year. It is very unfortunate that they didn't do this education of the board level at the same time they were doing the grassroots work. So I don't know if you understand where I'm going with this, but um, it because of the, the because the board could just say, oh, well, it's just the committee and they, they didn't get all their work done. It's not thorough enough. It's not uh, it's not complete enough. So they were able to poke holes in it. So anyway, I'm glad to uh, happy to answer any questions you have because I do have more, you know, more information if you need it. Yeah, so I, I have C hands and I will invite them to uh, speak. I just want to make a uh, uh, procedural remark that uh, uh, executive committee's uh, uh, agenda was on uh, committee's uh, work plan and committee's uh, 
uh, uh, uh, policies. And uh, one board member mentioned about this uh, resolution issues and uh, and uh, diversity issues. So I'm not certain that it's, we can consider this is officially on our agenda. So may or may not yield any actions. So with that said, I just want to clarify that. So uh, the conversation is important. So I like to continue this conversation. And I see Brett as hand first, and then followed by Nilsa. Sorry, uh, my question was answered already. Okay, Nilsa, go ahead. Sorry, Sorry, girl. Sorry, girl. Sorry about that. Um, how are you? Okay, so um, I I just want to echo what um, what was said earlier. It is very frustrating because we did spend two years working on this, and our goal as a committee was that once this was passed at resolution, that we would have a whole year to work on refining best practices for this committee. Um, but they decided to take it off the, um, the the agenda. We did at our executive committee meeting discuss the idea of maybe us as a board collectively send a letter uh, to to NCARB with our thoughts and disappointment that this is not being taken um, as a priority. I did not uh, reapply to go to NCARB um, as a volunteer because I thought my time would be best suited in committees and organizations that are willing to use my talent and my work. Um, however, I did get a call and an email from NCARB asking me to come back that they did uh, want to take this seriously for the next working year. So because of that, I did agree to come back and hopefully, um, as was just mentioned that they're going to take this on and really do um, something positive. Question would be, do we as a board feel that we need to send a letter um, to NCARB uh, with our thoughts about the um, withdrawal of this, of this um, motion? So we had, um... Um, um, Laura and I at, at least had some uh, organize our thoughts a little bit, see uh, what inference we can make, either send a letter or more investigative inquiries. And uh, so Laura had a detailed response from uh, NCOB about logistics, about the process, potentially modify and or revitalize um, this resolutions in this meeting, but it looks like procedurally not possible. So, um, so that I just ask board to consider if we're sending something out, uh, it will be good. We talk about what is the objective of our uh, letter, okay? Knowing that uh, procedurally we cannot really change the outcome. Yeah, I mean, the letter would serve a purpose. It would, um, you know, one of the comments that I actually got uh, from from these training sessions that I've been going to is that they were surprised at the lack of responses from everybody. So perhaps this letter could serve a notice to them that, no, we're not ignoring this issue. It's really, really serious. And we believe that the board, that the national board should um, should be uh, very, very deliberative in ensuring that um, the resolution is well understood and passes next year. I, I, I think that we should write a letter. I really do. Now that I've heard that from them, that they didn't get enough responses. And here's what I told them. I said, the reason you didn't get uh, very much in the way of responses, people agreed with it and felt that when it was time to vote on it, they would just vote on it. It wasn't that controversial, but the board, see, they use that as a rationale for, oh, we didn't get enough input. 
So therefore, we better uh, daylight it some more and get more input. You see how they were able to view the lack of um, controversy, if you will. So I would rethink that, Tian. Okay. So um, I will have Laura to respond, but I just want to, for the board members less familiar with this resolution, it is about to streamline that the committee members' uh, service dur uh, durations or terms, so allow for a quick uh, advancement for other members, hopefully in doing so, achieve uh, a better diversity, and uh, the, the resolution was uh, 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 sent, it was taken back by the organization. So if you have any thoughts that, uh, as Sylvia mentioned, if you issue a letter as uh, as a board, uh, what kind of message they like pass on to the NCOB leadership? Okay. So Laura, uh, go ahead. Uh, sure. I was just going to suggest if the board does want to go forward with the letter, maybe it's, well, I can say, you know, we're disappointed it didn't go forward this year, really then outline what you would like NCARB to do with the next resolution and all, all of what you would like to see in a new resolution from NCARB with the governance changes. And you could really take the opportunity to make some suggestions and even go beyond, you know, maybe what was previously considered. Yeah, you could reiterate. Actually, you could reiterate the, um, the resolution in 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 its whole and then maybe add on a few things that would clarify and make it stronger and remember the two at large members were left pretty vague things like that could be um helpful i think yeah so i would really recommend you do this and you need to we need to get this letter in their hands electronically before everybody leaves for the meeting on the 23rd of june so I would say uh, early next week uh, to mid next week at the latest, so that there's some impact. Okay, I will be back shortly. Okay, uh, housekeeping item. I'm asking a moderator to help uh, promote uh, Ebony Louise, who was a temporary out back to a panel member. Thank you. Um, okay, I have seen many hands. Um, uh, Nilza, is this a new hand? Uh, if yes, I will. Still... No, I, I am done with my comments, although I do support okay. us writing a letter. Okay, okay, good. Uh, uh, Brett? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I'm hearing from Nilsa and uh, Sylvia, they recommend that, and I think we should take that recommendation very seriously, and I worry that if we don't write the letter and car board may just say once once again that there isn't enough input and they may say that only two of our board members are speaking and not the whole board so let's do it thank you uh ebony you're on i think i had my hand raised to just so that people knew that I was back. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll put it down. Like so again, um, I, I want to give uh, one more chance to all members of the board that uh, I am uh, on the same page with Laura. We can express our disappointment, but it is, well, the letter will be more constructive after express the disappointment if we have uh, one or two uh, recommendations uh, as, as uh, as a, a way of moving forward. Tian, this is Sunny. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, do we have those recommendations? Like, is there a draft of what those recommendations would be? No, we are seeking input. Uh, knowing again, I already put the context to restore or to amend that uh, uh, resolution is not uh, procedurally possible. So we can first 
point we can make our emotional, you know, uh, statement, and then it will be uh, more constructive if we have one or two recommendations. I would like to just, uh, you know, this NCARP thing, like it keeps coming up. I mean, I feel like we talk about it at every meeting. Um, I feel like for the letter to be most effective, like that we're talking about two separate things here. I feel like the letter should be very specific to the motion at hand that has failed and state our disappointment. Um, I think if we add like, and again, I'm, I, maybe I'm missing the point, but I, I think what we would like is for the, the what, and, and Laura, also just a question for you, because I attended this, um, when, when was this voted on? Was this after the um, regional meeting that I attended? So they presented it at the regional meeting and they just released them for the members to be aware of. And then at the April NCAR board of directors meeting, they officially take action as to what resolutions they're gonna move forward. And they chose not to move this one forward. But that was a decision by the board of directors. Okay. Um, so again, I, I, I kind of uh, keep keep this NCARB issue at, at hand because look, I, I continue to believe that like we're not like we don't have dedicated or proportional representation within this organization, and this is going to continue to be a problem. Um, and I and it it is a non governmental agency that has a huge amount of power over our profession in this country. And and because of that, also in our state, there are some fundamental representation representation issues that are whatever you think the representational issues of our United States Congress are within this organization. It I mean it's scary, like the systemic sort of racism and lack of diversity that's that has sort of been ingrained in this process is a direct result of our state and our people not having representation there. Um, again, I don't want to muddy the waters with our discontent and, and, um, and being upset that this resolution didn't pass, but I would like for the board to consider that conversation separately that, that our state, again, I don't know like what traction we could possibly get, but that we begin to ask and demand for that proportional representation outside of a board of directors. Um, I, 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 I just strongly feel that way, but I do 100% support our board sending a letter of disappointment to NCARB's board of directors over their inability to um, take up this resolution and move it forward. I agree with Sunny. It is scary about the lack of representation. It's does not rep represent, it's not diverse at all. Okay, Pascal, uh, comment? Uh, we cannot hear you, Pascal. Yeah, I forgot the old unmute button. Sorry about that. Uh, if, if here's my recommendation that I'm going to leave with you guys, and that is that seeing how the NCARB works over the number of years that I've been involved, uh, there's ways to get things done, and there's ways to orchestrate things to to navigate through the curtains that you run up against. Um, I would be a, a strong proponent for you to gather um, a, a, an initiative or, or, or gather an assembly of consortium boards. Remember, there's 55 boards in this bucket uh, that are like-minded and advocate for this uh, initiative because nothing speaks louder to NCARB than numbers. So um, I, would, I would strongly suggest you, you guys get on that pathway. Excellent suggestion. 
uh, I don't, I, because we are not, um, I just wanted the members to be aware of, because we are not procedurally possible to uh, vitalize this uh, resolution, I don't think there's a clear deadline to us. So if we need to take some time and find a like mind state jurisdiction to express our views together, if you need to take longer, I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, if anyone has a, a suggestions, opinions, uh, please uh, deal with the full board. Um, my name, hi, it's Nilsa. Um, I think that we can uh, walk and chew at the same time, and I think the letter needs to go out at the same time we need to gather support. I like what Pascal, Pascal said, and I also agree with Sunny 1000%, the lack of representation for a state like ours who has the majority, the largest uh, members of architects and not getting the representation that we need is not. Uh, something we should allow. Um, to Nilza's point, I will add to that that I do think it would be not, that's why I, I feel like we have separate issues here. I think if we could simply send a statement of disapproval, um, and I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm a really bad writer here, but s something in regards of our disappointment about this resolution failing at the recent board meeting. And then we work on these other issues um, at the same time in the background. I, I think that that would be the best best step forward. I am personally, uh, Sunny, I inclined this approach. Looks like my initial thoughts is hopefully including something tangible and specific, but I'm now uh, more on the same page that uh, express our in, in emotional uh, disapproval. And, and then we can, um, can uh, work on the small substance issues later, but I still prefer if possible, but I don't know how to get there. Uh, Pascal, this, this letter is really uh, a joint letter by more than one jurisdiction. Well, I, uh, I, I think you can issue several letters, quite honestly. I mean, the first letter can just be this, simply the first salvo across the bow and then just continue to uh, to unleash. How do we, uh, how do we even approach to other jurisdictions? Ask their mind. Oh, well, this is the telephone. Okay, John. This is Laura. Um, I mean, I think perhaps Sylvia Nielsa might have some ideas from talking to other members of the Diversity Collaborative, and I can talk to other MBEs from other jurisdictions that I feel like might be in line with the board's views, and see if I can get some people that way. Okay. I would agree. I think we can send it a shorter, strong letter now that's signed by this board and then work on the other efforts. I think it's also really important that we add the data in our letter. So if we're saying, you know, we represent X amount of people in the profession and, you know, just make sure that we're tying in the impact that this decision is making. I think that makes it even more powerful. So is a motion needed here um, that a letter is drafted or no letter? There's no motion necessary. No. Got it. Great. Laura and I can and the Congress, unless you, unless the board of field have resolution. But I still see uh, Nilza and uh, Brett's hand. Are you have more remarks? Comments? Sorry, I have no further comments. I just don't know how to lower my hand. Okay. Good. Um, we are ready for um, public comment, moderator. Sunny has, Sunny has a comment first. Sunny, uh, that's a new hand? Yes, new hand. Okay, go ahead. I have lots of, have lots of hands regarding this. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I would like to put myself um, forward to, to um, uh, the formation of a committee on this issue. Um, it, it, again, it doesn't have to be discussed now, but if 
it, it, it's a big enough issue in my opinion. Um, I think there's so many um, issues that um, the state of California should care about this. And um, if, if and ever there was a committee, um, I, I would like to sign up and I'd also just like to um, nudge the board in that direction. Okay. Um, uh, let us to think about it, but uh, at the moment, I think we can put this into the communication committee's agenda. It is a part of communication. And I don't know if you are currently is uh, a member of a committee, but uh, you can always be appointed to it, or you can uh, just uh, sign on as a mem public member to, to the next meeting if we are going to have one. Tian, Tian, Laura, I mean, I'm sorry to jump over emails. I think we could talk about this maybe more after the meeting, but I think what Sunny's suggesting is maybe more like a special committee. And if you want to do that, you could do a two member committee of the board, perhaps a licensee member and a public member. Two members, we don't need to follow the Open Meeting Act guidelines for discussions, but that way you could have maybe a, a more nimble response and maybe more direct dialogue on these issues than versus the typical committee process. That's, so I'm that's understanding that's, what Sunny's suggesting. That is what I was suggesting, a more nimble approach to this. Okay. Okay. Um, um, okay. Well, we'll certainly consider it, Sunny. Good idea. All right. Um, so now um, I assume the two person don't know how to lower their hands. Uh, and uh, we were open to public comment for this uh, item. This is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened the Q&A panel. If you would like to request public comment, please click on the question mark within the square located in the lower right hand portion of your screen. For your reference being displayed on your screen are instructions to make this request. I will pause momentarily to allow individuals time to access this feature. At this time, it does not appear that we have, I take that back. We have an individual identified as John Rinschinski. Your microphone has been unmuted. Thank you. Um, John Roshinsky, uh, the LAT, current LATC chair. Um, I would just like to uh, comment on uh, the discussion that just happened, just to let you know that we, uh, uh, the LATC has similar issues with CLARB um in the regard that um we do not have uh california representation on the executive board or the uh, board of directors at this point in time um, we've expressed some concern uh to clarb uh in the recent past in regards to some initiatives that they're pushing um Primarily that they are developing a uniform standard uh, for licensure um, that they are potentially going to request that we here in California amend our uh, process um, to match that. Um, we've ex again, we've expressed some concerns with that. Um, and, uh, I recently did apply to serve on the, um, on the CLAR board and, uh, went through the interview process for that. But the only, uh, offer that I received was to serve on their nomination committee, uh, which would have precluded me, uh, to, uh, serve on on their board and essentially I would just be recommending other individuals to serve in that capacity. So uh, I withdrew my um, uh, my uh, acceptance of uh, that particular position primarily because I just felt it wasn't fair um, 
to the state of California to basically nominate other individuals to uh, serve in that capacity when we have no um, direct uh, input in the deliberations and everything that are going on with CLARB. So I just wanted to share that um, and uh, just to let you know that um, we're dealing with similar similar issues and we'll just continue working with CLARB to try to rectify those as best we can. Thank you. Uh, um, that, that's a very, good, very relevant information. So for the board members who are not familiar with and the non-architects members, CLARB is a council for landscape architect, uh, architect licensing uh, Council, so it's an identical organization with NCOB. Any other public comment we receive? This is the moderator at this time. There are no additional requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? Yes, please. You're very welcome. Feature has been closed. So, uh, John, just for your information, you are our special guest. You can speak up without go through uh, a public comments process. Um, but I believe. So we are going back now to item uh, I um, that uh, updated possible action on uh, legislations. And Laura will give an uh, overview of these four legislations and um, see if any board member has opinions and uh, uh, we decide if we need to take any action at all. But the items are for, mainly for information. Right, uh, before we go to I, could we finish on item G? We have the committee policy to see if the board wants to adopt the changes. Oh, all right. Yeah, recommended? I... Okay, so this is G2. Right, yeah. Okay, so I can just briefly summarize the, the main reason the executive committee met in May was to talk about some changes to the board's committee policy. Um, as the members are probably aware, we have the communications committee, professional qualifications committee, and regulatory and enforcement committee. Um, and the policy for those committees is um, in the board's procedure manual. And it's it was updated a few years ago, but it just after me being here a few years, I just thought maybe there were a few additional changes we could make. And so it's in your packet. Um, and you can see the revised policy with the edits. They're not really significant. The main change would be to establish term limits for the committee members. Um, since all the boards have term limits for members, it seemed like um, it made sense to have something similar for the committee members, um, as well as increase the frequency of their meeting to twice a year. Um, and then also to reemphasize that um, committees were going to be providing reports once a year on the activities. We haven't really done that since I've been here, but um, the executive committee would like to see that. So we'll just reinstitute that policy um, and then just make sure that their the committees are aligned with the strategic plan objectives. So not a whole lot of changes, but just a few modifications. Uh, okay, so uh, I believe we need to go back to uh, public comment once again. Sorry, I, I skipped the second portion of the item. This is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened the Q&A panel. If you would like to request public comment for your reference being displayed on the screen, our instructions, I will pause momentarily to allow individuals time to access this feature. It does not appear at this time we've received any requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? Yes, please. Feature has been closed. Okay, Laura, we're now at uh, item I. Please uh, uh, present to this item. Okay. This is Brett Gladstone. Yes, Brett. Um, I had a question about agenda item I. Are we moving past it? We actually still need a, a motion if the board would like to accept the changes. Um, if I'd not, then... I'd like to make a comment. Okay. 
Is that in order, Mr. President? Yeah, a comment on which item. We have not started uh, I, I yet. Uh, yes, on I, I, I didn't see a report this, this uh, on our agenda from the Regulatory and Enforcement Committee. And I'm wondering, um, did they not meet since our last meet, a meeting of the full board, or maybe you can update us on the status of that of that committee? Um, the regulatory enforcement committee has not met since the prior board meeting. Um, I don't know if Robert would like to chime in. He's the chair. Um, that committee happened to work through its strategic objectives pretty fast. So um, the chair has met with the staff in the interim, but they, there hasn't been a full committee meeting. That's right. We'll meet again as we uh, establish anything relevant to that committee to the strategic plan reset. Okay. Um, I am sorry again. Um, we feel the board. Do you feel we need to make a motion on, on the H2? Uh, no, no, not the H, uh, uh, G2. Not we don't need to reopen the public comment. We can continue on item I. And when I hear anyone for action, not I will move to item I. All right, we will simply. Uh, Okay. including in the package of uh, of a strategic plan and we'll still get chance on that okay so we will have an update from laura about the, all the uh, legislations and just pay attention to the ab 1010 regarding the continued education either either our board members or uh, take advantage of uh, uh, ai's staff is us as well, so uh, there's still opportunity for further exchange. So with that said, Laura, please present the item. Okay, thank you. So we'll start with AB 107 by Assemblymember Solace. This requires all the boards within the Department of Consumer Affairs to issue licenses, uh, to issue temporary licenses to spouses of uh, active duty members of the military. We're currently required to expedite their license applications. So requires the issuance of a temporary license to people who meet these criteria. Some boards issue temporary licenses. This board does not currently. Um, so this bill is moving forward. It's in, uh, made it out of the assembly. It's in the Senate. There is a question as to whether or not these um, temporary license candidates would need to take the CSE because it doesn't seem clear in the language. Um, so I know that AIA California had had a discussion with the author's office and I talked to the Department of Consumer Affairs about this. So we expect to see some cleanup language um, at its next committee hearing. So it'll so provide an update to the board um, at the next meeting, but I don't think we need any action on this item. It's just an update. We don't um, get very many candidates expediting for this. We wouldn't expect it to be significant um, impact on the board. Are there any questions? The next one is assembly. Oh, I'm sorry. I, oh, oh, I do see hand of Pascal and uh, Brett. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make a comment that if um, if there is a possible exemption of the CSC on a 30 day reciprocity uh, expedient expedited license, I, I just personally believe that that undermines the integrity of the California licensure process. And, and this is coming from an individual who gets behind anything and everything for veterans, but not, and I, I can't go along with this one. I don't see any other hands raised, so I'm going to go on to Assembly Bill 646. Uh, this is by Assembly Member Lowe. This bill actually, well, it's in the packet. It did not make it out of the Appropriations Committee um, this year, so it's going to be a two year bill. So I'm going to just defer discussion on this to see if the bill becomes active next year, unless anyone would like additional information. Okay. So then, so. Third item is Assembly Bill 1010 by Assembly Member Berman. This is the bill sponsored by AIA California um, for the additional CE requirement on 
zero net carbon design. Um, board, we had a presentation in, in December um, from AA California on this. So we'll just open it up for questions and perhaps um, John, if you would like to allow um, Mark to make any comments. Uh, we 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 can go through a whole uh, four items, Laura. Then I open up every comment. Sure. Okay. So I don't see any questions at this point on this item. Oh, Pascal has his hand raised. Sorry. Just just a statement on AB ten ten. I think the coursework narrowly defined as zero net carbon design does not embrace other critical subject matter topics of climate change, such as resilience, adaptation, and environmental justice. Thank you. Um, I will also note this bill was recently amended. It was um, to give the board more time to adopt the regulations that the bill requires. So now there would be enough time for the regulations to be adopted. Um, the requirement would start before that, um, but then regulations would come after. On to the, the last item of the packet is Senate Bill 607 by Senator Roth. It's a Business and Professions Committee omnibus bill. This contains the language to allow LATC to begin fingerprinting next year. Um, they were going, the board started this year fingerprinting applicants. Um, we needed some implementation language for LATC that wasn't successful last year. So their requirement got postponed a year. We worked out the issues the Attorney General's office had. So this language is now in the bill. Um, so um, on this one, I'd like the board to see, uh, take a position of support if they are willing to. Okay. So I got, uh, I think at the first and the last item may need action. Uh, Pascal, if you feel the board need to take action on uh, AB 107, uh, I'm interested to, uh, to uh, listen to the argument and uh, formulate and uh, execute a motion. Well, I, I don't know, Tian, that the possibility of exemption of the CSE has been in fact clearly defined. So I think that has to happen first before there's any action to either approve or oppose it or support or oppose it. Okay. I do think the concern has been raised and I think it wouldn't just be this board that has that concern that anyone who gets a temporary license needs to meet the same requirements that regular applicants do. Um, so I am hopeful that issue is gonna get resolved before this bill so. okay. goes through the whole process. So, and, so we threw staff's note to this meeting. Okay. And, and then, and, uh, I'm sorry, way, go ahead. Pascal, you were saying something. I, were you going to ask about AB 1010? Um, yeah. Do you want to discuss more? And before I open to public, I, I don't know that there's more to discuss at this point. I think the board of motion to move. The PQ's recommendations to the strategic planning session, yeah. and I think at that point there probably should could be some healthy discussion about collaborating with AIA California, yeah. um, in and finding some common ground between what the PQ recommended and what AB 1010 is proposing. The way, and is the staff's a note um, your remark? Is sufficient upon them from this board meeting minutes, or we should have a motion. We'll continue work with uh, AI California. Well, I I think you're gonna embrace it. This concept where you, you're gonna embrace this at the strategic planning session. Yeah. I believe yeah. that's what I heard. So yeah, uh, yeah. So I think that's where it goes. I don't okay. know that there's a motion necessary to say that because it's already been done. Okay. Okay. Good. So last item, um, Laura, you prefer where uh, the board has a position on this. So um, I would ask anyone uh, who are familiar or have uh, you know, access to the uh, bill, make a motion. I glance that I don't see a problem. I can I make a motion myself? Yes, I can. You can. Mm -hmm. I can. Yeah, I make a motion to support in support of the uh, bill. Okay. Uh, SB 07, 607. I will second that. Okay. Uh, should we go to public comment first before we vote? 
uh, uh, mic. Yes, Mr. Okay. President. If, if there's if there's no further member discussion, you should do member discussion first. Yeah. Any any other discussions from members on supporting of SB six oh seven? I have no. Uh, this is no Serrano. I have no comments on six oh seven, but I do have a comment on AB one oh seven. And is there a way? For I understand that the bill is going to state that we give a license to every spouse of every military person. Do they have to pass a test or they just get a license? Well, that's a good question. No, they, they would have to be licensed in another jurisdiction. So they would have just demonstrated that, you know, competency some in another jurisdiction. So, um, so either that or um, will they have to pass a California test before they get a license? I understand us waiving a fee. I have no problem with that, but I do have a problem with someone getting a license who is not familiar with the California landscape. You know, we right. are drought or you know we have a lot of earthquakes. We have a lot of things that need to be considered when. Um, issuing a license so yeah do we want to provide a recommendation to the author that there needs to be an amendment or some language that needs to change i, mean, I think that the author's office has heard that comment from i know from aa california and also the department of consumer affairs because they represent more boards than just us they made those comments as well that the language needs to be clarified so um so it's really up to the board if they if they want to no, that's that's board. fine. Thank you, Laura. That okay. that clarifies it. I just thought that nobody. Had. Thank you. Okay, I see no further discussion. Uh, first, we'll open uh, agenda item I for public comment. This is the moderator, and at the direction of the board, I have opened the Q and A panel. If you would like to request public comment for your reference being displayed on your screen are the instructions on how to do so. All commenters will be provided two minutes. Once the end of your comment period ends, you will be muted and I will move on to the next public comment. With that, we do have an individual identified as Mark Christian. Your microphone has been unmuted. You uh Thank you, California Architects Board, Mark Christian, American Institute of Architects, California. We're briefly on AB 107. We are working to ensure that the California supplemental exam needs to be completed before this population can receive a temporary license. And I'll continue to work with Laura on the status of that. It is our opinion uh, that the way the bill is written today, it would allow a license, it would mandate a license to be issued to this uh, uh, population without having to take the supplemental exam. And um, I believe AB 1010 has been discussed enough, but if anyone has any questions, happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification, Mark. It's very important, very good. And uh, thank you for working with Laura to make sure that uh, the California supplement exam is required uh, on the AB 107. Um, any other public comment? Any mm -hmm. questions is, regarding AB 1010? The board member on further clarification. Mark Christian is here. This is the moderator. There are no additional requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? Yes, please. Feature has been closed. Okay, we have uh, uh, quite a few items on the agenda J. Uh, and about NCOV, Laura will present to the items. Okay, thank you. So the first one is just an update on committee meetings. Actually, I'm not sure that we have a whole lot as the committees in the current year wrapped up. Um, NCOV recently announced appointments to committees for the next year. Um, so I, if any members are serving that committee, if you want to let me know, I can just keep a, a list of who's serving what kind of helps track California's participation in NCOV activities. It has an action. Sorry. Someone's speaking. Go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to say, has it has has it been announced? Because I haven't heard officially yet. Uh, uh, I was I'm not. Yeah, John did. Sunny got an appointment. Uh, those are the ones I know of. So um, actually, if the board members are interested, you can we can do a verbal sharing. I, I can start a call name from top down. Is a board member interested to share their committee assignment? Yes, yes. Okay. So I started with myself. They assigned me to that the long standing committee I involved the past six years uh, is a certificate alternative review committee or review team. And they are also recently uh, appointed me on the future committee and I have not get the official confirmation. That's my assignment. The next person on the list is Brett Blackstone. Have, have you applied any uh, committee? Have you got appointed? You're asking if I've been applied for a committee uh, or been yeah, appoint, yeah. appointed? No, I have not. Okay. So, uh, Sunny, how about you? I am on the credentials committee. Oh, that's. I was I complained about my committee appointment last year. <laughs> I got a much better one this year. Oh, so good. Make a noise is good. Otherwise, uh, like me, I keep sending you the same thing. Okay, okay good. Yeah. I'm glad you're happy. Um, and we have uh, uh, Ebony. You had, did you apply anything? I did not. I'm not going to be on the committee this year. Okay, uh, Neoto. You have told us a little bit. You stay on the. Um, I did not apply, but I'd be happy to serve wherever needed. So, but so was on. But you yeah, are continuing on the appointed. diversity, right? Yeah, she's going to be on diversity. That one I know. Okay. Uh, next person is Pascal. Um. No, I did not apply. Uh, I took the pathway that discretion is the better part of valor. And I just felt that it was time to step aside and let others uh, rise to the occasion. Okay. Uh, Robert, did you apply? No, sir. No, sir. Did not. Okay. Uh, Ron Jones? Uh, no, sir. I, had, I have not. Okay. So we. Uh, you know, I haven't heard anything official, but I'm assuming I'm going to be on the diversity committee and I will be on the RLC, which is regional leadership committee, uh, which is comprised of the, um, the, the region leaders, I guess. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I, literally I've not heard anything official, I, which is I, weird. My assumption is both you and Anils are there because I actually inquire. I say I'm interested in diversity. Right. And the response that they said that the, the, the committee was heavily uh, uh, California, our region already. So yeah. it looks like, yeah. I guess I'm on it, but I haven't heard, heard anything official. So. Okay. Uh, it's important you and Anils uh, uh, stay involved. Yeah. yeah. I agree. All right. Um, continue. Sorry, Laura. We, I just curious of who I serving on what. No, it's very helpful. Okay. Um, so I think that's it for the first item. So then the second item is the just the agenda for the upcoming annual business meeting for NCARB. I think it's in your materials. We don't need any action on this item. We just provide it so the members are aware of what's being discussed. Um, members can still register to attend virtually. Um, so it's great. It's in that hybrid format. Um, so the next item is oh, hold on. I, I've got something on the agenda for you. So I have the draft agenda. So I, I'd like everybody to try to attend this one. It's short. Um, it's Saturday, June 26, 8 a.m. Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and we will have the um, the West card meeting. The, the, they're only giving us an hour and a half, everybody. So if you're not there uh, in person, um, please register online so you can attend this meeting. It's an hour and a half, like I mentioned, 
Um, we will be introducing the new um, executive director for West Carb, uh, Mallory. Um, from uh, she's from the New Mexico chapter. She's already uh, the exec at in New Mexico, and she's going to add on wear another hat and be the executive for West Carb. Um, and they are going to be asking for volunteers for West Carb Committee. So I hope you guys aren't totally confused about all the committees that you're being asked to do because there's California committees, West Carb Committees, and NCARB Committees, okay? So what Tian went through just now, I believe, was NCARB Committees. Is that right, Tian? Uh, yeah. What did you say? Oh, I said you, you were just going over the end card. That's right, the end card committee. That's yeah. Yes. So if you guys can please show up on Saturday the 26th, they're going to be looking for volunteers for West Carp committees. And um, I know that Robert got volunteered already for bylaws committee. And um, they are looking for people for the education committee. So if anybody's interested, uh, be ready for that. Um, anyway, it's it's uh, nice and short, so if you can at least attend that part, um, and then of course the, the rest of the agenda will be filled with lots of other stuff. So uh, I would highly encourage you to come you know, to whatever section that you can, but try for this for sure. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Sylvia. Okay, so the next item is um, action on candidates for the 2021 NCAR Board of Directors. That was timely, but. They didn't, the NCARB doesn't have the materials ready yet, but we usually get a packet of information as to the candidates. Um, I don't believe any of them are contested, but um, what I would suggest if the board is willing, which I think is what they did last year, is they just deferred the decision on voting to the board's voting delegate at the annual business meeting, and Tian is the board's voting delegate, so he would be making the decision on how to cast California's vote. Right. So I just wanted the full board to know, we tried to get the qualifications, resumes of each candidate. Laura reached out a few times. Uh, the information is just not ready yet. Uh, so um, if you feel comfortable, uh, Laura and I will inform you for the vote or after vote during the vote. So uh, if you want to delegate this to us. Yeah, yes, I would. Yeah, do, do we, we need, need a, a we need an official action like resolution or just no. yes? We don't need any action if, if but okay. I think Pascal so, has his hand raised if you would like to speak. Pascal? Yeah, Tian, I just wanted to say something to the board a little bit about the model law, because I know it can be pretty brain numbing when you try to read through this in your packet. And 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 there was some confusion early on when the when the committee had concluded its work. And, and I think it's important for the board to understand that this document will serve as an updated national model uh, and enhanced resource for jurisdictions that being boards to either adapt or adopt at their choosing as they update their practice acts and regulatory framework. Approval of this resolution does not require member board laws and regulations to be identical to these provisions. So it's either all you're doing as a, as a board would be approving to a, to either the new model law, which allows you to either again adapt or adopt the model law. And and I wanted to add one more thing in the, that the model law, if you were to if you go to your page 218, 219 in your in your packet. It explains what the continuing what education means approved education for initial licensure and it allows for experience to be represented to be represented as education, which would keep in alignment with our table of equivalents. And it also allows for uh, boards to have supplemental exams. So the fabric of the California licensing process was preserved in the model law, we made sure that happened. Doug uh, McCauley was uh, my predecessor on the committee, and then I came in and, and finished off uh, with the work there. But please note that um, that's that's the purpose of model law. Thank you. Again, I want just to uh, ascertain what I heard. So we can, we can vote for supporting and 
is that the not for QS to adopt or to not adopt other law as a as a as a, a jurisdiction? Is that correct? All you would be approving is that the new revamped model law would sunset the old model law. The old okay. model law was pretty archaic. Okay. Thank you for serving on this. Thank you. So on these items, the resolutions that takes us um, to, I think, later on this agenda item. So the board could vote on each resolution if they would like, or again, defer the decision to the voting delegate. Um, I think at this point, most of them are non-controversial. There is the one left that does make the modification to the board of directors governance, but it's not the more significant changes. It changes the term limits for the regional directors from three years to two years. So it's up to the board if they would like to take a vote on each resolution or allow uh, the voting delegate to make that decision at the meeting. Um, can I see a hand or just verbally speak out? Do we need to go over uh, each uh, resolution or you want also delegate the voting of the resolution to uh, to us. Are we talking about item three at the moment? Um, it's, uh, no, it's item four. three, I'm sorry. and then also yeah. item yeah. six. They got it. They sort of got combined as we yeah. Yeah. discussed. So the okay. the candidates, and then also the resolutions. Um, I am. I'm not sure that we should that we should be supportive of. Of allowing the current board members to be on the board for three years at this point. Uh, we're already having a difficult time trying to get them off the board so that we can have some more diversity and they want to extend it. It's probably not something uh, we should be doing. This one actually reduces it from three years to two years. Can we for reduce it to three years? Yeah, but only for the regional director positions. It doesn't change the officer positions, which are the members that serve the longest. But like Sylvia will be a regional director and now she will only be able to serve two terms, whereas currently they can serve up to three years. So it's a slight change, slight improvement, I guess. If you want to look at it that way. Um, just in time, just in time for me, they cut it. <laughs> we cut it. Oh well. It's okay. I don't want to serve for three years. I think that's too long. You know, I think two years is perfect because you you get to know your your work. And um, you know that you can speak, but three years, you feel like you've just been there too long, I think. So anyway, I agree with that. It's fine. So um, I, I'm i not clear about the uh, uh, Are we talking about the resolution? If you have a concern, looks like they're moving towards the right direction. They are shortening. No, the I, I, I thought it was the other way around. I, I wasn't. Thank you. So you're good. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. With with okay. going two years. Yeah. All right. So I have not heard the suggestions. So I assume the board is okay to delegate the vote voting authority for the resolutions as well. Do we need a motion? I should. I prefer have a motion. I, I don't. We could have a motion if you want to, but what we do need a motion on is item five, which is the credential letter, which is the board saying that Tian is the voting delegate? So yeah, let, let's just do a motion on that. Okay. On the on the credential letter. That's so that's for your packet if you need to see it. Yeah, oh. that covers everything. And that would make Tian the voting delegate, and Nielsa is the alternate delegate. Okay, can I have someone uh, uh, make a motion? Uh, that they trust in your time and, uh, and I think Michael will tell us we will need public comment. We have a motion first or public comment first. I move approval of the credential letters, Robert Chairman. Anyone second? I will second that. Oh, uh, Sunny? Sunny. Okay. Okay, we're ready for the entire uh, agenda item J for public comment. This is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened the Q&A panel. 
If you would like to request public comment for your reference being displayed on the screen, our instructions on how to request public comment, I will now pause momentarily to allow individuals time to access this feature. At this time, we have not received any requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? Yes, please. Feature has been closed. Okay. Uh, continue on uh, agenda B, and uh, Laura will present this item as well. Well, we have to take a vote on J5 now. Oh, we did not vote. All right. Nope. My turn right. to take the roll now. Uh, yes. All right, item J5, review and approval of the credential letter. Mr. Fang? Aye. Mr. Gladstone? Mr. Gutierrez? Yes. Ms. Kwan? Gladstone, aye. Oops. All right, thank you. <laughs> Ms. Kwan? Yes. Ms. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Pearman, aye. Mr. Jones? Aye. Ms. Serrano? Mr. Ward? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you, uh, Secretary Newman. Okay, now we can go to item A and Laura will present. Okay, thank you. This is just a regular report. Um, first, you might notice it's in a new format, so I want to thank our admin staff who made some changes to it. I think it presents very nicely. Um, I'll just run through some highlights. We have um, first uh, one item we didn't include, I was getting an update on business modernization, which isn't too different from what I emailed out. But as a reminder, um, we completed sort of stage two of the process. We'll be going out for requests for um, proposals a little bit later this year. Um, so we're, we're definitely making progress on this. And hopefully at some point in the near future, before I retire someday, we will have a new IT system in place. Um, on outreach, I just wanted to mention our, we had been lending, our communications analyst had been lent to contact tracing at the state level, and she'll be returning to us July 1st, which is great when we can do more in this area. Um, moving on, um, we continue to have the majority of the staff teleworking kind of majority of the time, so we haven't really received new direction on that, um, but it looks like telework Will be here to stay with us, so we'll just figure out the right balance for the board. Uh, but it seems to be working well overall. Okay, so there's some information in here on our regulations on page three of the report. Um, the priorities for the board that we're working on right now are the retired license fee, setting it up the new amount the board has approved, as well as the regulations that we need to adopt um, on the disability access continued education requirement. If 801010 is signed by the governor, makes it to the governor, um, we'll have new regulations to start, but it would be a separate package. Um, but there's uh, all the regulations are listed there, but those are the priorities that we're working on right now. Um, moving on to page seven, we have statistics on the ARE, um, comparing California's pass rate with the national pass rate for the first quarter of this year. Um, uh, I'm sorry, just the just the California rate. And then um, going on to the next page, you can see the comparison um, between the national pass rate and California. Um, we have talked about getting more data from NCARB um, on candidates and the demographic data that we aren't able to access, but that NCARB does through candidates for the ARE. So they're working on individual state reports and they should have that ready quite soon. They had told me at the end of May, it would be within the next few weeks. So I expect to have that soon. Once I have it, I'll um, provide it to the board, but hopefully that'll give us um, some good ideas for outreach and messaging. Um, and then on page nine, we have the CSE data, um, and also then we've mixed in the landscape architect data as well. Um, and then on, starting on page 12, we have enforcement data. Um, the number of complaints is down for the prior year, but I do want to note that um, the prior year was higher than normal. I want to say we average around 300 complaints normally a year. Um, you can see the final action or final status of complaints there. 
Um, most of them settle before they make it for board action. And then you can see the most common violations um, broken down in a table on page 13. Same data, uh, similar data for LATC on page 14, and then the enforcement actions start on page 15. Uh, those are the ones that will be included in the board's newsletter as well. So those are posted online. Are there any questions? Like Brett, Brett has a question. Yeah, hi. Um, the subject of board administration, the governor's <laughs> office borrowed, I think, 270,000 from our our board. And since there's a big surplus in the in the in the in the state budget, I wonder if this is the year we're getting it back, and um, this might be the best year to seek the money back with the surplus. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, the legislature is obligated. We'll see if they pass the budget by June 15th and then the fiscal year ends at the end of this month. So um, I haven't heard on whether we're getting that repayment. And then we think also that the um, all employees are under a salary reduction for a low program. We think that will go away. So once we have those details, um, I'll provide a budget update to the board early next month. Once we have that information available, I can let you know whether the fund or whether the loan has been repaid. It will be no. of interest, but I'm, I don't know exactly when it will happen. Can we make that an agenda item for next time? Sure. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments? That's very good, uh, Brett. But overall, the state has a lot of uh, plus. Take our money back. Okay, I see no further comment. Uh, we are going to close this item with uh, public comment. This is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened the Q&A panel. If you would like to request public comment, please use the reference display currently on your screen to request public comment. You will be provided two minutes. At the end of two minutes, you will be muted and I will move on to the next public comment. I will now pause momentarily to allow individuals time to access this feature. At this time, it does not appear we've received any requests. Would you like me to close this feature? Yes, please, moderator. Feature has been closed. Okay, we are now at agenda L. Well, that's a good coincide with uh, LATC. So we we'll ask uh, uh, Trish Rodriguez to present this item. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the LATC had two meetings. Uh, we held a meeting on April 29th and a special meeting on May 25th. At our meeting on April 29th, uh, proposed regulations to adopt waiver of fees for licensure renewal or replacement of license upon declaration of emergency was approved by the LETC and recommended for board approval. Um, section 1109, <clears throat> sorry, 1109.5 of the government code went into effect on January 1st of 2020, and it authorizes state licensing entities to reduce or waive licensing fees for people affected by proclaimed or declared emergency in the previous year. Staff work with DCA Regulations Council to prepare a draft regulatory proposal that would implement an emergency fee waiver by adopting California Code of Regulations Section 2651. The proposed language is attached for board consideration. Uh, I understand um, legal counsel Karen Halbo has one uh, edit to make to that language, and then I can introduce the um, possible motion for the board consideration. Karen, did you want to go ahead and? Um... Yes, thank you, Trish. And, and I know we've poured over this, but on uh, the section 2650 and subdivision C, we have, as it reads, it's the application form for state of emergency fee waiver pursuant to this section shall be supplied by the board and shall include proof. But what the board is doing is requiring proof. Um, so I would have us edit the shall include proof to be shall require proof. 
because that was what the LATC was trying to say is that a part of the application is that they will need to prove that they reside or have a business address in that location. Um, and that that is echoed in subdivision E number one that says if they supply verifiable proof, they can have the waiver. Um, there's also a comma to be removed up in subdivision D number four, but that is uh, minor and usually the instructions are that the executive officer can make that sort of grammatical change. Okay, so with that, I will go ahead and uh, read the possible motion and include um, the amendments. Uh, so the LAT is requesting the board to approve the proposed regulatory text as amended for section 2651, direct staff to submit the text to the director of the Department of Consumer Affairs and Business Consumer Services and Housing Agency for review. And if no adverse comments are received, Authorize the executive officer to take all steps necessary to initiate the rulemaking process and make any non substantive changes to the package. If no adverse comments are received during the 45 day comment period and no hearing is requested, authorize the executive officer to adopt the proposed regulations for section 2651 as originally noticed. I will pause here to obtain the board approval before proceeding with the rest of my update. Housekeeping item. I see uh, uh, Brad has a hand raised. I don't know for this one or the previous one. Brad, uh, your hand is raised. The older one. Okay. Any board has any comments and concerns? Now, um, anyone want to make a, a, a motion? Just uh, make a motion to approve the motion. Okay. This is Neil Cesarano. I'd like to make a motion to approve. This is Sunny Ward. I will second. Okay, uh, we're ready. Oh, uh, uh, we open to public comment. If any discussions before we open to public comments, let me know. Okay, we're open to public comment. This is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened the Q&A panel. If you would like to request public comment, please click on the question mark within the square located in the lower right hand portion of your screen and type, I would like to make a public comment. I will now pause momentarily to allow individuals time to access this feature. At this time, it does not appear we've received any requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? Yes, please. Feature has been closed. Okay, so <laughs> this is Trish again to continue. Uh, and thank you, thank you for that uh, motion. Uh, the LATC has had a presentation uh, at its April meeting by the California State Water Resources Control Board regarding the Qualified Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan Developer or QSD certification requirements. The LATC continues to meet with the Water Board representative to track changes uh, to, Q to the QSD certification requirements as they relate to the responsibilities of landscape architects. Uh, Sonny, Ms. Rodriguez, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we need to vote on the, the, the motion that's on the floor. I apologize. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. Sonny, your phone or your microphone was on. Uh, I call, uh, can I call the roll? Yes, Mr. Secretary, please. All right, so this is on item L2. Mr. Fang? Yes. Brett Gladstone? Yes. Pascal Gutierrez? Yes. Sylvia Kwan? Yes. Ebony Lewis? Yes. Robert Perriman, aye. Ronald Jones? Aye. Nilza Serrano? Aye. 
Sunny Ward. Yes. Thank you. The motion passes, sir. Okay, Trish, continue. Sorry. Okay. Um, no, I apologize. Thank you again. Uh, so the LATC held a special meeting on May 25th. The Landscape Architectural Accreditation Board, uh, also known as LAAB, invited stakeholders to provide comment and address specific areas of revision to their 2021 accreditation standards around diversity, equity, and inclusion by May 28th. Although the standards were approved in January of 2021, LAAB believed it was imperative to continue to work on revisions pertaining to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, member Pamela Brief was appointed to work with staff in analyzing the changes and prepare proposed recommendations. LATC scheduled a meeting on May 25th to discuss and prepare comments. Input from the meeting discussion were compiled and the responses submitted on May 28th. And also at this meeting, uh, Tian uh, announced the tra transition of the board liaison uh, by himself to board member Ron Jones. The LATC thanked President Fang for his valued perspective and input over the years and welcomed uh, Mr. Jones as the new board liaison. We look forward to seeing Mr. Jones at our next meeting on August 4th. That concludes my update. Are there any questions? Any questions for Chris? Mike, should we need to go back to public public comment again? Sorry, just trying to get off mute. Uh, y yes, we do at the end of the item here. Okay. If I don't see any hand, I will open for public comment. This is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened the Q and a panel. If you would like to request public comment, please follow the instructions currently being displayed on your screen. I will now pause momentarily to allow individual time to access this feature. At this time, we have not received any requests for public comment. Would you like me to close the feature? Yes, please. Feature has been closed. We are now at the end of the meeting. The last agenda is M, the future meeting dates and location. Uh, the dates is uh, in the package, uh, September, I think by 11. Uh, and meeting, we tentatively, uh, first of all, we assume we will be meeting in person because it is important to have this in person dialogue and also facilitated by our uh, uh, staff at the communication department. And uh, uh, if that is uh, the plan, uh, we will definitely confirm with the full board very soon. And uh, at the moment, Laura and I are thinking uh, Sacramento might be most uh, logistically uh, convenient for staffs and full board members. So, but uh, welcome ideas if you have concerns or ideas about the location. Sacramento sounds like it's the easiest for at this point for everyone to you know we all know where it is we know where the meeting would be we don't have to look for a venue and if we have to change at the last minute it won't matter because it's at the you know it's a cab so yeah i agree with that also we have a multiple department the staff is joining us so uh, yeah travel will be far easier for yes Oh, you mentioned September 10. Is it two days, 9th and 10th, or just the 10th? It is two days. Yeah, I don't exactly remember the dates, but two day session. 9th and 10th. Uh huh. And, and that is because strategic plan always has its own one day, and then board right. meetings another day. 
Okay. It'll be usually about a day and a half, whereas like maybe we'll start in the afternoon of the ninth and do board business and then do strategic planning the next day, perhaps. So that'll right. be two complete days, but we'll get more details. Since we have not seen each other in person for so long, we probably want to do two days. Yeah, okay. And then um, shall we talk about December? Uh, off, off the record. Okay. 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 Yeah, our goal is that December is in person again. Yeah, it'll probably be in Northern Cal, right? Northern okay. California. That's off the off the record. Yes. Talk about it here. It's okay. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'm open. <laughs> yeah, Northern California. We're still looking for a place, Tan, that you, you know, will approve. But um, then we're going to have a holiday get together. So. Um. They'll be here up in Marin County. So that is going to be at my place, uh, similar to what Nilza did two years ago. And I'll be hosting it. So it'll be a lot of fun. So we're looking at either the Frank Lloyd Wright um, Civic Center that he designed and built in um, Marin County, or perhaps College of Marin, which has an architectural program as well. They have nice facilities. Too. So those are the it's very early discussions right now. And I believe that's December 10th, correct? I think that's what I had. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So everybody. It's a, Friday, it's a Friday and that's it. Yeah. It's a Friday and it'll be, uh, it'll be, a, I guess we'll have the, uh, pr the holiday uh, dinner the night before, like we always do. It'll be on the 9th, right? And then the meeting would probably start early. Friday morning and then members right. can get out a little bit earlier on Friday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. So make okay. sure you mark your calendars for a Thursday and a Thursday evening and Friday. Okay. All right. Um I don't know. Do we need uh, um any other discussions? Uh, do we need uh, public comments on this one? Am I? Yes. Yes, we should take public comment on each agenda item. Okay. Sorry for We're the formality. For, We're open for public comment. This is the moderator and at the direction of the board, I have opened the Q&A panel. If you would like to request public comment, please click on the question mark within the square located in the lower right hand portion of your screen and type, I would like to make a comment. All comments will be addressed in the order they are received. And I will now pause momentarily to allow individuals time to access this feature. At this time, we have not received any requests for public comment. Would you like me to close this feature? Yes, please. Features closed. Okay, before we adjourn the meeting, I just want to remind the people, uh, I think we still have time, uh, board members, to register to the virtual attendance of the annual business meeting. This is a very good opportunity to you know, get involved and uh, as a part of decision making on various of issues. So please do so. I think they open until a week before uh, meeting. So, okay. So with that said, if no one else has any other comments, I'm plan uh, planning on a June meeting. It's a 2.20 precisely meeting is adjourned. 